Hi, everybody. I'm Zilla Blitz, and welcome to episode three in our playthrough at Sicily 43 from Assault Games. In our last episode, U.S. Rangers had taken control of a contested farmstead, but a German Tiger tank on the other side might have something to say about that. Let's jump in and pick up where we left off. Let's do a quick recap of the situation before we start moving forward. We've got U.S. forces on the right side of the map as we look at it. German forces on the left side of the map. Both sides are fighting over three victory point locations. One up here, which is a building that the sniper is hold, in, a hold up in. Two is this building over here that the Germans have controlled. And then three is this farmhouse, if I move this out of the way, that the Rangers took on the last turn. That gives the U.S. two out of the three victory conditions. If the scenario were to end now, the U.S. would win. So the Germans, the onus is on the Germans to try to retake this position. From the U.S. perspective, what they did earlier was load up Ranger squads on these Stuart tanks, have them race forward, and they managed to get one squad inside this farmhouse here. The other one uh, suffered casualties, and the Stuart got its treads blown off, so it's immobilized. But the goal from the U.S. perspective, I think, is to get more of these Ranger squads up into this contested ground, dig in and try to hold it and make the Germans come across this open ground. From the German perspective, we've got a little bit more of a challenge because the Germans don't have a machine gun and they don't have smoke. But what they do have are these veteran tanks here. We've got a Panzer 3J and we've got this Tiger E over here on the very far edge of the, the battlefield. I think we need to leverage these to try to blow apart some holes in these US positions and then perhaps weaken it enough that they're either gonna have to fall back or the Germans can advance and try to retake it. We've also got a 75 millimeter anti-tank gun over here that can be used to advantage. With that being said, let's start our third turn with the initiative roll to see who gets to act first. Germans with the decided edge in the initiative here. So we will go to our uh, command, our support phase, which basically, two, the one thing I'm gonna do off camera is I'm gonna allocate the command points onto the unit cards. We've talked about that before, so I'm only gonna show that and talk about it if it comes into uh, impacting play going forward. Now, there, uh, we can change, the Germans can act first in this support phase. One of the things they really only can do because they don't have smoke capacity is change the, fi the facing of their anti-tank guns, uh, but they're not. This is actually, it's, in, it's positioned pretty well here. So the Germans will pass in their first part of the su support phase. The US, however, have their 60 millimeter mortar and that most definitely should fire. Now the U.S. mortar team has a number of options. We could drop some anti-personnel fire on these rifle squads, perhaps put some smoke in front of these tanks to block their line of sight. But I want to take the third option, which is what we did uh, earlier in the battle for them, which is to drop some mortar rounds on the 75 millimeter anti-tank gun. Now, one thing we can do here too, we can have this machine gun unit, which is a spot for them, rather than having them spot directly. Because if the mortar team spots, they have to look through this brush here and then through these woods. But this machine gun team has a direct line of sight with nothing hindering it in there. That will help our spotting roll. And if we do that, one thing that we have to do with the machine gun unit, although it is a free action, they do get attack dice minus one for this turn. So they've taken some of their time to spot for the mortar team. I'm gonna calculate the mortar team's attack and then we will roll the dice and see what happens. I've shown the attack die calculations in earlier episodes, so I'm gonna kinda streamline that now so we move through the playthrough efficiently because there's gonna be a lot of shots, in particular, I think, in the middle part of this, this battle here. The mortars get, uh, with indirect fire, they get uh, two greens and a blue die. They, the Germans have a yellow die for inherent defense against the air. They have a blue and green die because of their terrain. However, one of the characteristics of the mortar team is that they take away one defense die from the defenders. So the attackers have blue, green, green. Let's see what we get with their attack roll here. The mortars are up in the air. Ooh, not bad firing again. We get a critical hit, a hit, and a hit. Let's see if the anti-tank gun can defend. They do not defend very well at all. Casualties inflicted here. So as we see, we're gonna match these up. We get the, the blanks don't match up, the blanks, and then the two hits cancel out. What's left over from the mortar team is a critical hit and a hit. Let's put the damage on the, on the anti-tank gun. So first up, we have a hit to calculate here. So that it already had one hit, and this is a four hit point unit. So we're gonna give it its second hit, which flips it over. That takes it down to half strength. Now we have to apply the critical hit. The critical hit always includes a hit and now we roll for the critical hit status, which is the attacker's green die against the defender's blue die. Nothing happens. So heavy casualties on the, on the anti-tank gun here. 
However, impressively, this anti-tank gun didn't collapse. It's still here. It's battered, it's broken, but it's ready to fire. And that takes care of all of our actions in the support phase. The US have used one of their current eight actions here. Now we go to the uh, operations phase. The one thing that we still have to do before we move on to the next phase though is calculate the losses in terms of pressure for the Germans. This is a 15 point unit, very valuable. Reduced to half strength, it goes down to eight. So that is seven big pressure points applied to the Axis track by the US forces. If it carries up over 12, which is a little bit off the screen, this wake breaking point would increase for the Germans. So that's a particularly good shot for the US. Now we go to the operations part of the turn and the Germans have the initiative, they're gonna go first. We have these two tanks, I think we wanna fire as quickly as possible. And then this anti-tank gun also. These are, the, these are really the German hope here, I think, is to start blowing stuff apart here. Let's uh, be a little bit bold and we're gonna start with the Tiger E. It's gonna fire straight across these woods at the Stuart. I'm gonna calculate the attack. We don't have to spot this because it's in the open and this is an immobilized target, which might make it easy pickings for this Tiger to wipe out. This is a pretty nasty attack. A an 88 millimeter Tiger firing at a Stuart. This is not the armored confrontation you want if they're, you're the US. Because this is a recruit status unit, it already gets a suppressed result it has to negate. Two reds, a yellow, and two blues for the Tiger here firing away. Oh my goodness, it's just a, it's a whole plethora of hits. I think this might be the end of the Sherman. It's got a critical three suppressions, four hits. Oh my gosh, it's, a, it's just a whole big pile of trouble. Let's see what the Stuart can do to defend itself. Three hits. This is, this is looking pretty grim for the Stuart here. Uh, let's calculate these out. This could be the end of our Stuart here. So um, a hit and a critical hit and three suppressions get through. Um, any, in a standard attack, if there's more than one suppression, only one suppression is applied at a time. So the unit is suppressed. However, two hits get through as well. The critical hit applies a hit and the other hit gets through. So this Stuart is reduced to half damage again because it was hit once and then it gets hit again. So it's down to one basic strength point. It's a pretty fractured tank at this point in time. However, we have one thing left to do, which is we still have to resolve the critical hit. Now, if this has to get another suppression on it, that's a fallback. And because it's immobilized, it's gonna be wiped out. Green against blue, green's the attacker. Blue, it survives. So the steward hangs on, but it takes another riveting shot and it's kind of spewing smoke here. Pretty good shot there for the Tiger. Let's go to the US turn. Before we move on to the US action, we have to apply the damage to this the half strength steward. A full strength steward is six, a 12, half strength is six. So that's six more points applied to the US pressure track. Casualties starting to mount with these damaged units and, and fractured anti-tank guns piling up here. I just realized this was off camera, but the US have this Sherman down here. Let's see if we can finish off this anti-tank gun before it does damage. All right, Sherman has two red and a blue. Anti-tank gun has yellow, blue, and green. Sherman opens fire. Two hits and a suppression on the anti-tank gun. One hit gets through, it's wiped out. A hit and two suppressions. The advantage goes to the US. The suppressions negate each other, but the two hits here by the offense, they, they don't, defense doesn't have enough to cover it. Anti-tank gun takes one more hit and is eliminated. A kill for our Sherman and the US rack up some more points. The difference between a half strength anti-tank gun and a full one is another eight points. So we go one, two, three, four, five, come down here, six, seven, eight, and that ratches up because we've gone over one lap. It ratchets, ratchets up the German pressure to three. They are only two levels to withdrawing, but still a good bit of casualties to go before they get there. Let's go to the German action. I'm, I really wanna fire the Panzer 3J, and I really wanna fire it over here at this anti-tank gun, but I don't wanna fire it until it's spotted because the anti-tank gun has a low silhouette, which can, it's gonna make it really hard for the tank to spot it, which will make it for a tougher shot. So I'm actually gonna let the anti-tank gun take a shot first, and then fire with the Panzer 3J, if we can do that. Which means, let's have these Rangers here open up, uh, sorry, the German rifle squad here, open up on the Rangers in the open. Because these Rangers are gonna try to push up quickly. This is kind of, doesn't really change the range calculation. So I think this rifle's shooting on the Rangers is a pretty good shot. We got them in the open. Let's calculate it. Rifle attack power is a nice red, blue, green. Rangers defend with the yellow, blue, green. A lot of little things adding up here. Pretty even shot here. Let's see what the rifles can do, rifle squad can do. Ooh, a nice double hit there for them. Two hits and a suppression on the Rangers. Let's see how the Rangers react to their first fire. 
Oh, nice. Three hits and a critical suppression. That wipes out the attack, so the Rangers, no effect. This unit has fired. The Germans are done. Let's go now to the U.S. action. I think as the U.S., we are going to take this uh, anti-tank gun shot at the Panzer 3J. Uh, let's see if we can put some damage on it. That would be a huge hit for the U.S. Anti-tank gun only gets two dice at this range, uh, but they're both red, so that's a pretty good shot. The Panzer 3J defends with a lot of dice, but only one of them is red. Let's see what happens. The 50 anti-tank gun here, hoping for some big hits here. Oh, not very good. One complete miss, one hit with the suppression. Let's see if the Panzer 3J, I suspect it's going to have little trouble defending against that, which it does. So no impact for the 57 millimeter uh, anti-tank gun. And now the Panzer 3J crew can smile and say, we got you back. So let's have them return fire. That's exactly the shot we were hoping for for the Germans. They're gonna open fire and let's calculate this attack. Panzer 3J is firing with the red, two greens and a blue. The 57 millimeters defending with a yellow, a green, and a blue. This is a pretty good shot for the for the Panzer 3J here. Oh, it completely whiffed. What a terrible shot. One measly suppression on all those dice. Should be an easy defense here. <laughs> they almost get drilled, but they survive. No effect by the Panzer 3J. Let's go now to the US turn. For the U.S., I think our objective here is going to be to try to clean up this mess. Now, a unit, a, an armored vehicle can move backwards at half its speed, round it up. The Stuart has a movement of five, so we can also do a fire and move. It's got enough movement points to fire if we're just going to have it move one back, back one hex. So we're going to take a rather long shot at this Panzer 3J. It's got to fire through this multi-story building, or round it basically kind of thing, which makes it a really hard shot but there's no harm to trying. So we'll set up this shot, take it, and then we're gonna have the steward back up so we can open up this rocky ground for the Rangers to move up and in. This is a long shot for the steward. We've got a red, a blue, and a green as a firing thing. The building in the way and the Panzer III J's armor gives it a lot of defense. Red, red, and experience too. Red, red, yellow, green, blue. Let's see if the steward can get lucky as it opens fire here. Two hits, that's probably not gonna do it. Lots of opportunity to defend for the Panzer 3 j Yeah, it blocks the shot, no problem. But the Stuart can fire and move, and we're gonna have it move back and open up, backing up right to this zone. That takes care of the US turn. Let's go to the German turn. So the Germans have some decent shots here at units, but I think given the range, it might make more sense to have them let the US forces move up and then shoot them with opportunity fire. The Germans have actually four orders left here, but they are going to pass. We're gonna go back to the US movement down here. We're gonna have this US Ranger squad move up into these this rocky terrain here, and just kind of a basic regular move, uh, a normal action move. And we're not gonna have the Germans fire at them because as the Germans, I wanna to wait to shoot that at the full squad here to see if we can uh, render them a little bit, kind of tear them apart. It's a bigger, fatter, juicier target here. So that's the US action. Germans, again, are going to pass here. So. That gives us back to the U.S. Now we're going to try to this Ranger squad, make a mad dash up to these woods up here. So we're going to let it go one. And actually, this come to think of it, it didn't make too much, well, the range thing. Now let's see if it's got it in the open here for this rifle squad to fire at. Let's see what we've got. We've got a perfectly open shot right down that line. Let's take it. So the rifle squad's gonna fire at these rangers moving in the open before they can get behind the cover of the woods. It's actually a pretty good shot for this rifle squad. They get a red, blue, and a green firing at this range. Rifles caught in the open without any blocking terrain only get their inherent defense plus one die for their experience. Let's see how these German rifle squad does. Three hits, this could be a tough defense for the US. This looks like some casualties on the way in. Oh. Suppression and a hit. The US take two hits on this one then. That reduces this squad to half strength. Pretty effective firing there by the Germans. And there's no, there's no suppression, just damage. Fire incurred. So we have to take these victory points off. Ranger squad takes three more, brings them up to 12. One more will put them over the top, form, causing their pressure to go up, but not quite yet. It's at the max level. US squad, however, can keep moving. So it expends one movement point to go here, two up into this zone, and then three, it's only a cost of one. It does get up into the woods, but it's been reduced. Casualties on the way. We go now to the, that's a normal action for them. We go now to the, oh, three actually, sorry for the Rangers, is a fast action for this. And one quick correction on this. Actually, because this was a fast action, the, the Rangers should have lost their blue die, uh, but it didn't matter in the results. It would have still been two hits.
As the Germans, we have three actions left. We're gonna put one on the sniper here and have him do a hide action just to move up here and to take position in these thick woods. Should be a good, nice spot. And he might actually have some shots down here into the building. So we'll see if this sniper, uh, I've not used these yet, so I'm not quite sure how they work, but I think it makes sense to get them up and just to put some more pressure, get as much firepower as we can down on this farmhouse area. Go to the US turn, they have two actions left. We're gonna have these rangers make a bold rush for these woods across this open area. One, two, and then right here, you can have them do a fast action to get in there. Right here, we're gonna have this rifle squad at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Maximum range, open up and see if they can get a lucky shot and take them out. Because they're moving fast, there might be a chance. Let's calculate the attack. It's actually because they're moving in the open. This doesn't turn out to be that bad of a shot. They, the, range, the rifle squad gets a yellow, blue, blue. Rangers get yellow, yellow because it's going through the rocks blue for their experience, but they lose their blue because they are doing fast action. This has the potential to damage. Let's see what happens when the rifle squad opens fire. Oh, critical hit and a hit. Rangers need to defend. Two hits. They block the hit. They do not block the critical hit. So the Rangers will take one hit of damage and we have to roll for the critical hit as well. The blue is stronger than the green. They defend against the critical hit. Rangers do take a hit. They can use their third movement point to make it into the woods. So casualties incurred. Nice shot by the Germans. The Rangers move. That means we go now to the German turn. The Germans have one action left. I think we're gonna have the Germans pass and wait to react to the US turn. We're gonna have these Rangers here, because there's not much left to fire, we're gonna have them take this opportunity to dig in. This will give them, that puts them in a more vulnerable position now for the remainder of this turn, but it gives them an advanced defensive position in subsequent turns. This is the building hex, this is the one we need to hold, so I think it makes sense to kind of fortify their position. So that is the end of the US actions. The last Rangers take their actions. The Germans have one action left. Interestingly enough, this German squad, which hasn't acted yet, has a straight clear line of fire that's unobstructed by anything, goes down hex sides right into the building here. So we're gonna have them take a shot at these rangers that are starting to dig in. Bit of a long shot given the circumstances, the attacking rifle squad gets a green, blue, red as it's firing at this range. It's going to lose its blue because it did the fast action move in the last turn. Because the rangers are in the building, they get red, green, green, they get a blue for their experience, their inherent yellow, and they lose their blue, the weakest one, because they're digging in. So, bit of a long shot here. Let's see what happens. The German rifle squad opens up. Oh my goodness, that's some deadly shooting. Two hits, three hits, and a critical. This, this could be bad for this unit in the house here. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, that's how to defend. The, these rangers are here for, they're here for the, the duration. Look at that. That's about as perfect a roll as you can get. Three criticals, three hits, and two defenses. Yeah, not a chance. That was some nasty firing by the Germans and some incredible defending by the US. That finishes the German action, finishes the US action. Turn three is done. As we go to turn four, the loss of the anti-tank gun is gonna hurt for the Germans, but I don't think the strategies have changed. US wanna consolidate around this defensive position here, although they've taken some casualties. I think the Germans want to still take advantage of this Tiger and this Panzer J. I don't know what the US can do against the Tiger at this point. We'll continue on. The Germans have extracted a good bit of casualties on the US too. Basically have this Stuart almost wiped out and kind of cut down to half strength two Ranger squads. The battle rages on. Let's begin with turn four. Once again, we'll roll for initiative. Blue die is the US die. Germans get a red six, which means they will have the initiative. One of the things that happens as units get eliminated is that you lose a command option for that unit. So the Germans go down from seven commands in this turn down to uh, six. Now there is a limit you can have, you can't get down to lower than four, but the Germans will have one less. So they have six commands that they can execute in this turn, whereas the US still retain their original eight, giving them a slight operational advantage here. Once again, off screen, I've put the command tokens on the unit cards and I'll talk about those if they have an impact on play. Now we're drifting off into the support phase. The Germans don't really have anything to do. The US, however, will once again fire this mortar. And the question is what to shoot at. 
So eventually these German forces are going to have to push up and try to take this ground. So they're going to need boots on the ground to get some of these objectives. So I think it makes sense to with the mortar that I don't think it's going to be very effective fighting against the armor that we should try to take out some of these forward German infantry squads. So we're going to have the mortar fire at this rifle squad here. I've calculated out the attack. It's two green dice and a blue die for the mortar firing over. It did fail its spotting roll. So we had to add in a green die. However, you lose the lowest defense die on mortar fire so it's going to be two greens and a blue against a yellow should be an interesting shot here for the offense mortars are in the air oh what a terrible shot nothing don't even have to roll for the defense u.s mortars completely ineffective that completes the support phase of the turn now we go into the operations phase germans win the initiative so they will go first because of the hit it'll put on the U.S. morale, I think we want to try to take out the Stuart tank. So we're going to have the Panzer 3J fire at the Stuart, Stuart tank and see if it can knock it out of action. Right, we've calculated out the attack. Panzer 3J gets an automatic suppression route result because this unit is a novice, an inexperienced recruit level unit. Pretty decent attack here. Let's see if the Panzer 3J can take him out. It opens fire. Oh man, neither side. Is it raining or something like that? We get two suppression results on it. Stuart defending. Whoops, that one went over the top. I'll re-roll it. So. Stuart gets two hits and a suppression. No effect for the Panzer J. The hits and, and suppression can negate the results. So uh, that was pretty ineffective for the Germans here too. Panzer 3J has fired. Now we go to the US turn. Let's take a shot with the anti-tank gun at the Panzer 3J, see if it can put a hit on it. Pretty straightforward shot. The, the anti-tank gun has two reds. The Panzer 3J has a collection, one of each dice. Anti-tank gun opens fire. Oh man, the US, what's going on here? Nobody can hit anything. We don't even roll for the Panzer 3J. No effect. So the US has fired twice, rolled five dice and have not got a single result with any of them. Germans get to respond. We're gonna push forward with the Tiger tank and see if it can put the Stuart, Stuart out of action. So we're going to do a move and fire, which actually will be to move it up one hex because that's half its movement, uh, movement allowance rounded up and it could still fire. I'm gonna have it fire at the Stuart tank. The question is, do we want this Sherman to try to take a shot at the Tiger? But I think we're going to pass. The Tiger is particularly heavily armored in the front. And I think we should try to knock out the Panzer 3J first before we do that. And plus we might be able to move the Sherman up now and have a little bit better shot, but that'll come in the future. For right now, no, the US is not going to fire. We're gonna have the Tiger tank take a shot at the Stuart. I'll calculate it. All right, the trees and the fact that the Tiger moved adds some defense to the Stuart on this round, but still got automatic suppression because of the unit level and a lot of firepower here from the Tiger. The Tiger opens fire. Oof, that's a lot of hits. Four hits, five hits, and two suppressions. The Stuart, which is already belching smoke, gets three suppressions. This is, this is deadly. Nothing missed with that. This is the end of the Stuart, I think. Ooh, actually it gets some pretty good results. Let's see what we've got here. It negates four hits, one, two, three, but five hits got through. Oh no, wait, it negates six hits. Oh my goodness. One, two, three, four, five, and one suppression. So it, can, it can't negate, however, it can't negate the suppressed result that's on it, but that's the only thing it can't negate. We will drop the suppressed unit on the Stuart now, which can't fire, but it survives amazingly. Now, if the Stuart gets another suppression result in this turn, because it's immobilized, it can't fall back, and so it's eliminated instead. But I don't see a lot of firepower that the Germans can really put on the Stuart tank. The infantry can't really reach it, so it looks like it might survive another turn. We'll go to the US and we're gonna take a shot with the Stuart here, even though this line of sight is has to shoot around this building, which makes it for a tricky shot. Let's see if we can put some firepower on the Panzer 3J. It doesn't really have anything else it could do. It's thinking we could push up, but then it would give the Tiger an open shot at it. And I feel like that's going to be particularly rough traveling for the Sherman if it gets the Tiger gets an open shot at it. So we're gonna have the Sherman take a shot at the Panzer 3J. Here. It's a tough shot between the building in the way and the unit experience levels and things like that. It's a lot of defense dice, but I think we're still gonna take it. Hopefully we can get a good shot here from the Sherman. Sherman opens fire. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Two hits, a critical and a suppression, four results. Panzer 3J could be in trouble here. Ah, now it covers it. Plenty of defense there. Once again, neither side having much effect in this round. 
For the Germans, we're gonna have this rifle squad open fire on the anti-tank gun. Um, it's got a nice clear line of sight here and the anti-tank gun is already fired so we don't have to spot it. So let's see if we can do some damage here. It's actually a pretty decent shot for the Germans here. This brush doesn't provide as much cover and it's open and without the unit automatically spotted, rifle squad opens fire. Ah, pretty lame result, a hit and a suppression. Not much at all going on there. The anti-tank gun should have no problems. It just barely does. Two hits and a suppression, so it defends itself. No effective fire. Has the only result we've gotten so far this round is one single suppression. Neither side able to find the range and put heat on the targets. For the US, we're gonna have this Ranger squad activate and do a normal action and just move up. It, it cannot do a, a, a fast action because it did that last turn. It's gonna move up through the brush and up into the rocks here. That'll be a normal action, expending its two movement points. It's one movement point for each of those things. They've already had some casualties, so we'll keep that with them. That'll get this Ranger squad able to start pushing up in here should we lose one of these Ranger squads, which because two of these are down to half strength, that might already happen. So uh, US turn is done. Let's go back to the German turn. So I'm actually gonna have the, the Germans are gonna pass to see if they can force the US to act. The US could pass back, which would actually make the Germans act. But I think what I'm gonna have the US do is have this machine gun, which has been sitting and kind of ambush under cover for the whole battle so far. Open fire on this uh, rifle squad that opened fire on the anti-tank gun. It's only got this little olive grove terrain in the way. So it might be a decent shot and I, this is already, so we know where this unit is because they fired. So the machine gun's gonna open fire. Pretty decent shot, even figuring in the olive grove in the way and the, the crater terrain there. Uh, the fact that the unit's firing an ambush, they get an automatic suppression result added. The machine gun opens fire. U.S. just not dialing it in. One hit and one suppression gives us one hit and two suppressions. Should be a fairly easy defense for the rifle unit. And oh my gosh, yeah, it, oops, let's focus in on that. Yes, it, it, it is. <laughs> so once again, U.S. fire ineffective. U.S. totally ineffective this round. So in this case, I think what would happen in a two-player game is both sides would pass. The Germans would pass to get the U.S. to act. The U.S. would pass to try to force the Germans to act and not end the turn. We don't want the turn to end as the Germans because we need to move forward. We need to kind of eliminate some units in this uh, strong point and move forward. So we're going to have this or rifle squad open fire on the Rangers, the half squad, the re remnants of this squad that have advanced up here into the woods. Man, there's a lot of defense. <laughs> this is a tough shot. Even though it's close range, the wall adds some defense, the woods add defense, the, ra the rifle squad failed their spotting role, so the at adds a defensive role in here. And then the unit's experienced, so they get some more defense. It's, it's a tough shot here, but I think we have to take it. We gotta try to root some of these units out. Three hits. I don't think that's gonna be enough here for the for the, the squad, it would have to be a pretty rough roll here. Four, yeah, they negate it, no problem. So the Ranger squad survives that attack without any damage. Once again, neither side really able to do much to the others at this point in time. So I think for the US who now can act, the US can be a little bit gamey here and pass. And if the Germans were going to pass, that would allow the US to pass again and end the turn, which works to their advantage. So by passing as the US, it's gonna force the, German to act, the Germans to act. So we will do that a little bit here. That's gonna give the US a little bit of a rush of action at the end here. I'm gonna try this sniper out. So we're gonna have this sniper open fire on these rangers in these woods here. Snipers have a special rule where the defender loses its weakest die uh, as it attacks here too. So that's a, a somewhat of an advantage here. All right, so we get the sniper up here. Now the sniper is automatically hidden. I had put a hidden marker on it, but I think it doesn't lose its weakest die even as it's part of its sniper ability. That kind of wouldn't make sense. So I'm going to fire with both dice and assume that that hidden marker wasn't on it. Kind of a slight rules correction as we go. However, the rangers here are in the woods behind the wall. That makes it tough. They do lose their strongest weak die because it is the sniper firing at them. Let's see if the Germans can get lucky here. One measly hit, nothing going on. It's been a rather abysmal round here two defensive hits, so no effect for the sniper as it fires on the Rangers. Once again, we're gonna have the US pass and sit out the German action. Once again, we're gonna not pass as the Germans because we don't want the turn to end. We're gonna have this German unit here take a long shot at the Rangers that moved. I think that's a better shot than up in here. Hoping to do some kind of damage here. It's been a very uneventful turn. 
One thing we can do with this unit firing here is we can also have a joint fire, which adds in the best attack die roll from an adjacent, up to two adjacent units. They are marked with firing as well. So we're gonna have this rifle squad join in. It degrades the firing though, because it's going through some uh, obstru obstructions there. So it ends up adding a, a weak blue die, but still it's some added firepower. And this is the last German action. So we might as well do it. They end up with a yellow and three blues. The Ranger squad ends up with two yellows and two blues. I'm out of blue dice, so I'll swap that out. Let's see what happens. It's not that bad of a shot actually here. Ah, only two hits. Man, it must be like foggy or something or smoky on the battlefield or something like that because nothing's hitting now. Rangers are going to defend. No problems. They defend very easily. So once again, ineffective fire. And that's the last German action, which leaves the U.S. with three actions left to complete in this turn. And I know what I'm going to do with two of them. We are going to, now that they can't be fired at, we are going to have this Ranger squad and this Ranger squad dig in because they will be able to dig in while they're not taking any fire. They'll be dug in for the next turn, making it even harder for the Germans to take them out. So I feel like this is just a, a just a, for the US, we're just holding up here. We have one action left, which is going to be to move and fire with the Stuart. I wanna see if we can take a shot at the Panzer Brigade, maybe even this infantry squad up here. We're going to have, it gets one free facing uh, per turn. It's got a movement of five, so that one's free. Then we can go one, two, and we can do another facing vertex change for three. This is gonna lose its thing there. So it ends up being positioned up in here and it can do a move and fire. And let's think what we want to shoot at. Let's kind of calculate which one is gonna be the best target here. So we're gonna take a shot at the infantry squad. It's got less defense and the Stuart's actually not that bad against infantry. So we'll calculate this out. All right, we got a red and two blues for the fire and then green because it moved, green because it's firing through the woods, yellow because it's in craters and yellow for its defense. Let's see if the Stuart can do some damage. US has done no damage this time. A hit and a suppression, which really isn't a very great shot for it. Defending here, expect we'll see no problems, and there isn't any problems here. No absolute trouble whatsoever. So the US, totally ineffective. That ends their final move here. We've moved all eight actions for the US and all six for the Germans. So With as we wrap up turn four, I've pulled all the market. The US forces now dug in, in the woods, in the building, and in the rocky train behind it. Got the Stuart tank sitting behind there to kind of take out some fire at some of these units over here. Uh, it's a tough, I feel like it's a tall order for the Germans at this point, but neither side shot particularly well in that last round. I mean, there was just some horrible shooting on both sides. So I would expect to see, for example, this anti-tank gun's vulnerable. The Stuart should have been knocked out by now, I think. And this uh, Sherman tank down here in the very edge, those could be targets. I think the Germans still need to deal damage with these two tanks. And if they can do that, then I think they have a chance to kind of edge the US to a little bit more of a, a kind of a dangerous position and perhaps make a last rush with some, some squads here. But this machine gun up here, the mortars, anti-tank gun, it's a, it's a tall order for the Germans here. It's looking pretty good, I think, for the US. I'll be back and put a link to episode four as soon as it's ready. Here, curious to hear your comments. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.